All right, welcome back everybody. So today we're going to be learning the very, very last section of chapter eight, which is learning the perpetual um, inventory for moving average. Okay. So as we've seen before, we got to take a look at the first two um, types of costing methods, right? And we see that every time we made a purchase of inventory and every time we sell something, the average, it, not the average, but the, the way that we cost our methods, right? It's still moving along. So no matter what new things have entered in, we're going to enter it into the um, inventory worksheet and then we calculate it as is. Whereas when we looked at periodic inventory, right? It was just one entire amount right? We just made a list of all the purchases that happened. And then at the end of the month, that's where we calculate our totals of what we've purchased, right? And we minus anything that we had, like returns and stuff like that. But in this case, when we're dealing with perpetual inventory, we notice that you cannot have one formula apply for all of it. And you cannot predict what is coming forth or what is coming next. You have to go take one line at a time and update your inventory one at a time. So in that case, that's what we got to look at yesterday. All right, we got to look at LIFO and FIFO. This time, we're gonna be looking at moving average, okay? And I will tell you this, this one is the easiest out of them all, all right? The only difficult thing is that you will be constantly having to recalculate a brand new cost per item every single time, okay? It's a bummer, but it's the easiest way to calculate it, and we don't need to use colors. This is the great one. It's my favorite one. So, um, yes. So stay tuned, and let's watch, and let's see what happens. So, again, these formulas, okay, they do apply, all right? But it just depends, it's just how you apply it to the inventory worksheet, all right? So again, here's another scenario where we're starting off again with June 1st. We made a purchase of 100 toys uh, for $1.25 with a freight of 25, okay? So here you go. Back to our inventory worksheet, right? We're filling out our purchases. So here you go. Um, our total purchase price is going to be $125 plus my $25 free to give us a total of $150. And then we're going to break it down to our average cost per item. Now here, the reason why we're calculating the, the cost per item here is because, unfortunately, well, we don't have any other batches. We only have 100. We just made our first purchase. So that is necessary for you to calculate your um, average cost per item. Because right now, that's the first thing I bought. It's the only thing I recognize. And I have a total cost of 150. And I'm going to divide it by my total quantity of 100. Okay. So then the next scenario says on June 3rd that you sold 55 toys for five dollars each okay so again with this calculation here we're going to place it into our cost of goods sold right we only have one average and one batch only and that's going to be for a dollar fifty so with that being said i'm going to transfer that over here and i'm going to calculate 55 times a dollar fifty and that should give me eighty two dollars and fifty cents okay Right here in my inventory, the middle part, I'm going to subtract it out to give me a remainder of 45, costing me at $67.50. Okay? So that's easy so far, right? It's the same thing that we've been doing every single time. But this time, now on June 5th, we decide to purchase another 100 toys at $1.28. And um, the freight cost here is $26. So I'm going to place it into my um, inventory purchases section. And I notice that my when I do my calculations, so my total purchases is going to be 125, 28 plus my freight to give me a total of 154. Now, 
This is where I'm going to stop you here. You can solve for the cost the uh, cost per item if you feel it's necessary. Um, it's also good for practices as well. So I didn't do it for this one. But what I did is because we're doing moving average now, we don't need to calculate that cost per item anymore. We need to find the total, right? We need to add our columns up to get a total, total cost and a total quantity in order for us to now solve for our new average cost per item. So in this case, I added my two batches together, right? I started with 45, I bought a 100, so therefore I have a total of 145 items, right? I also added my total costs together. I added my $76.50 to my total cost of $154 to get me a grand total of $221.50. Now, this is where I can calculate a brand new average cost per item, which if we go ahead and calculate that, it should give you $1.5275, okay? So as you can see this, right? Every time we're making a new batch, we're going to be calculating a brand new cost, a brand new cost per average cost per item. Okay. Is everyone okay with this? Right. So every new purchase, it gets calculated. So the quantity of a hundred, if we only sold out of there, it would stay at the 150. But since we added the new purchase, then we, that's when we change it, right? Correct. Okay. Because, and then, and then we also have to take the assumption that every time we have a, if every time we sell a product, right, we have to start calculating that out of our inventory, right, as we go along. So that's why it's called moving average, okay? So every time we make something, it starts, the average starts changing and moving along, okay? So then on June 10th, you made another purchase of 100 toys for $1.30, okay? And the freight here is $27. So again, let's calculate this right here. So uh, my purchase price is going to be $130 plus $27 is going to be $157. Now, this is where we say, do we need to calculate the cost per, uh, cost per item now? Yes, because we made a new purchase, right? Well, not for this one. We're gonna oh. do it. We have to total up our tallies of everything. So we have 145 right now. We just added another 100. So then now my my total quantity is? 245. 245. And it's going to be a total of cost, right? So we started with 221.50 plus the 157 to give us a grand total of 378.50. Now, since we have our total quantity and our total total cost, now we can go ahead and calculate our average cost per item. All right, so then what did you get? I heard you calculating. I have uh, 1.54489. 1.5448, because of the slideshow, I cannot display all the numbers, but yes, good. So that's our new average cost per item, okay? So then what happens on June 12th? We sold 120 items, right? We sold 120 toys. So in this case, we only dealing with one number and one number only. We're only dealing with our new average cost per item. So here, we sold 120 items. It's going to cost me $1.5448, right? Because that's the only number that we have left. We're not dealing with any batches. We're not dealing with any colors. We're only dealing with one batch and one batch only. So with that being said, I'm going to calculate um, the 1555448. I'm going to multiply it by 120. Okay, 
total of 185.376. Okay, so because we rounded, rounded the, up, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so it should be uh, 185.39. And I will go ahead and we'll apply the equal round for today as well. Okay, so here I got 185.39. I'm going to go ahead and subtract that out to get another grand total, right, of one to, of 125, right? So 245 minus 120 gives you 125. We're going to calculate that 378.50 uh, minus 185.39 is going to bring you to be 193.11. And because we sold something, we need to re re recalculate our new average cost per item. Okay, because this time it may change by a tenth of a penny, even a thousandth of a penny. It could change because just the way that we're calculating it, um, obviously when we calculated earlier on, we started off with a bigger number with a bigger quantity. Now that we are rounding our numbers down, all right, making our pennies change, okay? So we have to recalculate a brand new cost per item here, and it should be fairly the same, all right? Again, it will change by a thousandth or even ten thousandth of a penny. But just know that it will eventually start affecting the rest of your quantity, all right, for when you charge your cost, okay? So here, we're left with 125, and it's going to cost me 11, which is exactly what we solved for. Uh, that was what, on June 30th, what we had remaining left in inventory, Okay. Now, the next part is introducing you to moving average with the beginning inventory. So, of course, this is the easiest way to transfer your information over. We already calculated our total amount right here. We didn't even need to have to separate or have to um, calculate anything. It's already been done for you. So, you're going to be transferring the whole 125 items for, a night, for 193.11, and you're gonna transfer over that into your inventory on hand, all right? Now, we're dealing with our next scenario, which again, on June 18, we sold a total of 90 toys, okay? So we transferred over the old amount into our inventory on hand, okay? And we notice that we need to sell 90 items. So here you go, 90 items. And we know that we need to take the one, do, uh, the 15448, transfer that over, calculate that total to get me a total of 139.04. Okay. And when we to do that, we're going to subtract it out to get our brand new amount, right? So we started with 125. We sold 90, so therefore we should have 35 remaining. And then we got a total of $54.07, which then now, again, we need to recalculate our average cost per item to be $1.5448. Uh, so nothing has changed so far. Then, the next scenario, on June 21st, we purchase another 100 toys at 132 with a freight of $26. So here you go. I plug it into my inventory. I increased my amount, my quantity, by 100, right? So if I were to just solve it as normal, so 100 times $1.32 gives you 132 plus your 26, uh, two, six, I believe that's 58, 158, all right? Now we need to add and combine our totals because now we need to take a new average cost per item. So we're gonna total up what we have, our old batch plus our new batch to get us a total of 135 in quantity. Our total cost here is going to be 212.07, which now 
we need to calculate a new average cost per item. And what is that going to be? One fifty-seven. One fifty-seven. Zero eight. Eight, 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 eight. Good. <laughs> Good. All right. One five seven zero eight. Okay. As you can see, my I made a sale. I purchased something, so now I'm moving my average along. Okay. So then again, on the twenty fifth of June. We purchased another 100 toys for $1.35 with the freight costing 27 right? So 135 is going to be there plus 27 should be 162 okay? Again, we're going to calculate our total amount. So 120, 135 plus 100 gives me 235. My total amount here is going to be $374.07. So then my average cost per item is going to change again because we made a brand new purchase. So in this case, if I calculate it, what should I get? 1.59178. Good. Good, good, good. So you see, every time we make a purchase, it's all of a sudden slowly increasing because our cost, right, our, our cost per unit is, is increasing slowly. So therefore, our average cost is also going to change as well, and it's going to increase slowly as well. Okay. And then on June 27, you sold a total of 120 toys at $5 each. So again, we only dealing with one number and one number only. And we're going to take our dollar five nine one seven, all right, and multiply it by the 120. So therefore, to get a total of 191.01, all right, we're going to subtract that out of our um, inventory to get us a total of 115, costing me at $183.06, which now I have to recalculate a new average cost per item, which is similar, but it changed by a tenth of a penny. Okay. But I guess this is a thousandth of a penny. All right. So then another thing happens here is you sold another 65 units, leaving you with a total of 50 toy toys left on hand. So again, I'm going to calculate my 65 for the dollar uh, 15918 instead of 17 to get me now 10347. We're going to subtract that out to get a grand total of 50, which is exactly how much my ending inventory is. We're going to calculate and subtract out the cost to get 79 59 and then we're going to get our new average cost per item and now it has not changed so from here and so on and so forth this is the easiest because you're not having to deal with colors calculations you don't really technically need it unless you want to show your work um, and that's how I'm going to teach you it the first way second way you can eliminate it if you want to so this is exactly what you're doing. You don't need any colors because we're only dealing with one batch and one batch only. Okay? And it's the easiest form to calculate because you're only dealing with one number. You don't need to break up. You don't need to keep track of which came first or which came last. This one, we don't care. We're just going to bundle them all up together and cost it out that way. All right? Any questions on average, on moving average? No, I'm not sure. All right. Okay. So again, we're going to go ahead and do our exercise and then call it a day. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and look at our example here. All 
All right, so 8.3 perpetual inventory moving average. So number one says your inventory method is perpetual and it is moving average. So on May 5th, what has happened? We purchased uh, 1,000 units at $3 on account. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we're doing moving average. So let me blow up this a little bigger so you guys can see. Oops, too big. There you go. So on May 5th, all right, we're going to skip our cost of goods sold and go straight into our purchases uh, area. So we bought 1000 items at three dollars and my freight was 100 okay. so purchase price was three thousand okay and then the total did i finish <laughs> yeah sorry i'm just format reformatting my paper there you go so here it's going to be one thousand times three I didn't even press enter. 1,000 plus 3, or I mean, sorry, times 3. 1,000 times 3 gives you 3,000. Mm -hmm. Plus the 100 is 3,100 for the total cost. Good. And which for the total uh, item cost is $3.10. Good. Right, because th we're only dealing with our first batch. So right. this one we do, Matt. We do have to take the average cost per item because it's all we have. Now you could go ahead and move it along into the inventory worksheet or inventory on hand. Okay, so we're gonna take our one thousand, and we're going. It's multiplied by three ten to get us three thousand and one hundred dollars. Good. So what has happened next? Um, on May 7th, we sold 550 units at $10 each for cash with no sales tax. Okay. So May 10, I mean May 7, we sold a total of 550 items. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and since we know that the only cost that we have available is my 310. Mm -hmm. Since it's already rounded, we could go ahead and just enter in your formula because it's already rounded. So what do we get here? $1,705. $1,705. So let's go mm -hmm. ahead and subtract out our 550 and what do we get? Uh, we have 450 left uh, and for a total of $1,395. $1,395 is correct. Okay, so this is what I'm going to show you guys to do because this is how I do it for, this is how I calculate my average cost per item. Instead of having to fix this number here, I'm going to actually move along with my page too. Instead of having to scroll up and down to edit to edit my inventory, I'm going to go ahead and go right across. Since I know for a fact that my ending should be 450 and I know it's going to cost me a total of 13.95, all I need to do is just recalculate my average cost per item right here. And it shows to me that it's still $3.10. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wipe this out with any color I want. Okay. So here, not only did I already calculate what I'm going to be getting right here, I could only, when I transfer over into my inventory on hand, it's already been done for. Okay. All I have to do is just calculate my new average cost per item. Okay. So then, what has happened next? Uh, we purchased 850 units at 
$3.25 on account with the great profit of $75. Okay, so what was that? $3,850 at $3.25. So, and this was May 10. So we purchased $8.50. That cost me three dollars and twenty-five cents each. So, what is my total purchase price? Is two thousand seventy-six or seven hundred sixty-two dollars fifty cents? Good. And my freight cost here? Seventy-five dollars. Is two thousand eight hundred thirty-seven and fifty cents. Good. Now, do I need to calculate my my uh, cost per item here? No. No, I need to add my other beginning inventory, right? So what's 450 plus 850? 1300. So we got a 1300 total here. And here, I'm gonna add my 1395 plus my 283750. $4,232.50. Hello? Okay, sorry. It's just a lot of reverb I'm hearing. Okay. And what did you say it was? Oh. Oh, I didn't break it down. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, you got 4200 Yes. Perfect. So I can go ahead and transfer this information right, ac right across because I know this is my new um, amount right here. And I can calculate my average cost per item right here in my inventory on hand. So what is my 4232.50 divided by 1300? It's the other way. Four two nope. three two fifty divided by thirteen hundred. Is three dollars point two five five seven. Perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend that to let me know that this is actually going to be a big number. So I'm gonna extend it to that much so then I can see the change in each average cost per item I calculate. But in this case, I don't need the top part anymore so I can black that out, wipe that out. So now I'm moving along in my page as well. Instead of having to scroll up, scroll down, scroll up, scroll down, at least I'm moving it along and I don't need to have to do with, deal with that. All right, so then what has happened next on May 12th? I was waiting for Michelle. She must be gone. So May 12th. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Michelle. I thought I unmuted. I'm sorry. Okay. You can go. I'm sorry. I thought I unmuted. No, it's okay. We were taking turns, so you were next. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, we sold 360 units at $10 each for cash with no sales tax. Okay. So we sold 360. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. So now I'm going to go ahead and go here. So May 12th for 360. All right. So what is my, what is the cost per item I'm going to be using? The 3.25576. Good. All right. So this is where my equal round formula is going to come into play. So equal round. All right. The first set of the argument is going to be my actual calculations. Mm -hmm. So here I'm typing in or I'm uh, cell referencing, right? 360 times the 3.257, blah, blah, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to end my argument with a comma. Now the next argument is going to ask me to do is how many decimal places do I want it to be? I want it to be in, to end in two decimal places, okay? 
and when I press the and I want to select enter or press enter, it should give me a rounded number of eleven seven two zero eight. Okay. So then now I'm going to go ahead and subtract out my uh, subtract out the 360 items. So how much do I have remaining? 940 items. 940 items, okay? And then if I subtract out this 117208, what should be my total balance now? Um, one, one, seven. Um, $3,060.42. $3,060.42. And what I'm going to do is instead of calculating my average cost here, I'm going to calculate it here. So I'm going to bring it across into my inventory on hand, right? So I know I have 940 left. And now I have, and it costs me um, $3060.42. So what is my new average cost per item now? Um, three point two five five seven six. Okay, so it did not change that much, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it out so you can actually see the difference. So let me see, where did it change? It changed very slightly. The last two. The last two digits, right? So if we're selling large quantities like we are here in this little. Scenario, right? We're out. We're selling thousands of items. So those every penny counts mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to clear those out the values are still there. They're just hidden underneath the actual thing All right, so now I know I have 900 items left and they cost me 30 60 42 All right. So then what has happened next on May? 15. May 15th, you sold 600 units at $10 each. Okay. Cash. All right. So May 15th, we sold another 600 items. So I'm going to go here to May, May 16th, 15. I sold 600 items. My av my cost per item is going to be the to round up to 1,900, wait, it, mine didn't round up on my calculator. Sorry. That's fine, that's fine. 9,000, uh, or $1,953.4596, so. So to 46. 50, or, or yes, 46. Okay, so good. 50. We're rounding up to the nearest penny, so to 46. Right. So good. I'm going to subtract my 600, so I should have 340. 340. Okay. I'm going to subtract out my 1953, and I should get a new balance of is 1,106 and 96 cents. Good. And then I'm going to transfer my information over here into my inventory on hand. And I'm going to now calculate my new average cost per item. And what do I get here? Was 3.25576. Okay, I'm going to extend that out. All right, so it has changed again by the last two digits. All right, 
I'm going to go ahead and wipe that out. Okay. So then what has happened next on it, May 20th? Um, on May 20th, we purchased 300 units at $3.50 on credit with a freight cost of $20. Good. So May 20th. So May 20th, we purchased another 300 units at $3.50 with a freight of $20. Okay, so what is my, I'm going to double check, was it $350? Yeah, 300 at $350. Good. So then what is my total purchase price here? $1,050. $1,050 plus my $70. Mm -hmm. It gives you uh, 1070 for your total. Good. And what are we going to do now? We're going to add them together. So it's going to give us 640 in 640. inventory. Mm -hmm. With a cost of So, and the total is $2,176.96. Good. I'm going to transfer that amount over into my inventory on hand. And what is now my new average cost per item? 3.4015. All right. So, because we made a new purchase of inventory, right? It has increased our amount of average cost per item. Okay. And then I'm gonna wipe, I'm gonna wipe this out. Boom. Okay, so now we have a new average cost per item. Okay. So then what has happened on the 22nd of May? Okay, the 22nd we sold 450 units. Each cash, no cell phone. Okay, good. So, 450 is what we sold on the 22nd of May. So, 22nd of May, 450. All right, what is my average cost per item going to be? Total cost there is $1,530.68. $1,530.68 is correct. Right? I'm going to go ahead and subtract out my $450 to give me a remainder of... One ninety, good. And now I'm gonna subtract out my total cost of goods sold here to get me a total of. That's fine. Calculate slow so we can kill some more time. Okay. Okay. The six hundred forty-six dollars twenty-eight cents. Wow, six hundred. $46.28. So we're going to transfer that over. Oops. We're going to transfer that over and then we're going to calculate a brand new cost per item. Yes, which is 3.4014736. Good. So here, notice here, it came out even after the, the, the thousandth of a penny, right? It stopped at five zero 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 zero. Notice after us selling those items, we now have a bajillion numbers afterwards. Okay, so again, that's the trick about average costing. You cannot actually get a solid, solid number all the time. It will change because, oops. Oh, no, that's right. Because as we make a purchase and as we sell our items, it will change 
the amount that we need to calculate for. Okay. So then, what has happened on May 25? Uh, we purchased 650 units at $3.75 a piece on an account with the plate price of $50. Good. So $650 at $375. $650 at $375 with a freight of $50. All right. So what is my purchase, total purchases? Um, $2,437.50. Good. Plus my freight of 50. Brings us to $2,487.50. Okay. So let's go ahead and add up our, calc uh, our previous batch. So we get a grand total of uh, $3,133.78 for the inventory and a total number of units of 840 total units or items. Good. And then I have to divide that. So what's your average cost per item here? Um, so I came up with three dollars and then it's seven three zero six nine zero four. Good. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go ahead and cross this out. All right, because I don't need it anymore. So then what had happened on the 27th of May? 27th of May, we sold 740 units, $16.25 each for cash, no sell tax. All right, so we sold another 740 units. So again, this is on May 27. We sold 740 at my average cost per item. I get $2,760.71. 71 cents, too. Yes. 27, 60, 71 is correct. All right. Go ahead and subtract out that 780, and what do we get remaining? 100. 100. Subtract the 2760.71. And what do we get? $373.07. All right. Transfer that amount over. So 100 for the 373.07. And calculate your new average cost per item. Three point. Seven three zero seven. So here is seven three zero seven 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 seven. So now we finally got back. We broke even, and it's an even number now. Okay, and then let's look at the last piece of information in our scenario. On May thirty first, you have a total of a hundred units on hand. And did we have a whole total of 100 units on hand? Yes, we did. Yes. yes, we did. And it cost me now $373.07. So how do you like this out of all the methods? No colors, no calculations. You're only dealing with one blob number. Yeah, it's a little faster. It's a lot faster. That is exactly why I didn't want to get started on this yesterday. <laughs> we needed content for today. <laughs> Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and knock out scenario question number two. So again, continue from, from above. Your inventory method is perpetual and is moving average. So here, you're given the information that on May 30th, you have a total of 100 units on hand. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number here. We know that's 100, and we know that it costs $373.07. We're going to transfer that amount into my new inventory table because now we're done with May. We're dealing with June now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and indicate the date here just so that I know. On May 31st, we have inventory on hand of 100 items costing $37307, which we know the average cost per item here is that long number. Okay. So then, let's continue with the scenario. What happened on June 5th? June 5th purchased 800 units for at $4 on account mm -hmm. rate of $100. So we bought 800 items for June 5th. Okay. We bought 800 items at $4 with a freight of 100. Right, so, and the, the purchase price is 3200 Okay, just hold on. Give me one second. Let me plug in that. Okay. So here, yes, it's going to be three. It's going to be um, 800 times, not divide, times four. Gives you 30. Oh, I added a negative in here somewhere. There you go. Equals 3,200. Plus the 100. Oops. Plus the 100. Equals 3,300. Good. Divided by the 800 is, or the cost per item is going to be $4. One, uh, 4 4.125. Okay. Now, do we have beginning inventory? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And because we're doing moving average, do we care about the beginning inventory? Yes. Yes, we do. So what you're going to do here is, if you'd like to make it so it's easier for you to see, you could go ahead and place your information into your inventory worksheet just like that just so then you can make your calculations more clear on what you're doing. Okay, so here we're not calculating for 800. We're calculating for a total of 900, yes. Okay, and the total for those 900 units is going to be $673.07. Good. So now, instead of doing it right here in our cost per item section, we can go ahead and eliminate that and go straight to our inventory on hand okay. and solve for the cost per item here. That way we don't have to do double the work. Gotcha. Which mm -hmm. is 4.08118888. Okay, so that changed our number drastically, right? When you calculated the eight, the 800 by itself, it was a dollar and 12 and a half cents. Right. And the previous batch was seven, was a uh, $3 and 78 cents. So that was a big, huge jump between the two. Okay. So with that being said, I can go ahead and eliminate this 100 because now I have a new batch I am looking at. I'm not looking at the 100. I'm not looking at 800. I'm looking at 900. All right. So then what has happened next on June 7th? Um, June 7th, we sold 350 units at $10.50 each for cash with no sales tax. We purchased, no, we sold 350 units. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So from here, it was June 7th. 
We sold 350 items. So what's my cost per item going to be? Uh, it's that 4.08118. Mm-hmm. We're going to... So my total cost is $1,428.41. And 41, uh, 41? Oh, you got 42. You got 42. So my stuff is not rounding like that. Okay. I'm, I'm in Word. <laughs> oh, okay. So you only can, <laughs> you can only write so many numbers in there. Yeah. Okay, so perfect. I'm no, that's fine. So what you can do is when you're in the calculator, you just re-enter in the 367307 divided by the 900. And right there, you're going to get your 4.08, blah, 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 right? From right yeah. there, go ahead and straight in calculate, multiply it by the 350, and you should get this answer right here. Okay. So you're just basically leaving that mumble jumbo in your calculator so you don't have to deal okay. with it again. Okay. Okay, so there you go. 14, 28, 42. So let's go ahead and subtract that out. So we had 900, subtract 350 to bring us a grand total of. Okay. Hang on. 900 minus 350. 550. 550. We're going to subtract our 14. 2842 to get a grand total of 2244 dollars and 65 cents good all right we're going to transfer the amounts over And what is my new average cost per item? 4.08111818. Okay, so it changed by, again, by a very small scale. All right, so I can eliminate this batch right here. All right. So then what has happened on June 10th? June 10th, we purchased 750 units for $4.25 on account uh, with a freight of $75. Okay, so June 10th, 750 times 425. Gives me $3,187.50. And 75 cents. Is it $75? Yeah. That is $3,262.50. Okay. So here again, are we going to solve for the cost per item? Thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred. With a total of five thousand five hundred seven dollars and fifteen cents. Good. So then, transfer the amounts over in your inventory on hand. Total of uh, 4.23626923. Yes, we've increased our cost mm -hmm. per item. All right, and we can eliminate our amount right here. Okay, so then. What has happened next on June 15? No. June 12. Oh, June 12. 
Um, on June 12th, we sold 450 units at $10.50 each for cash mm -hmm. with no sales tax. Did we? Oh, yes, you're right. June 12th. Okay, so June 12th. What, what, how many items did we sell? Uh, 450? 450, yep. 450, okay. What's my average cost per item here? 4.236269. Okay. Equal round. And that gives me a total of $1,906.32. Good. All right, we're going to subtract the 450 out, bringing my new grand total to be 850. 850. We're going to subtract out that 1906.32 to give me a grand total of. Three thousand six hundred dollars and eighty-three pennies. Three thousand eighty, three thousand six hundred eighty-three. Good. I'm going to transfer that amount along over here. And we're going to calculate our new average cost per item. Mm -hmm. Gives us four point two three six two seven zero five. Good. Seven zero six or so. Yeah, though we round it up. I don't have enough space okay. in my worksheet oh. here either. So, yes. So just leave that calcul that that calculation in your calculator. Okay. So then what has happened on June 15? June 15, we sold 500 units at $10.50 each, more cash, no sales tax. Okay, so June 15, we sold 500 units. And at what price are we going to calculate the set. Right in there, sorry. The the four two three six two seven oh that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. I messed it up. I messed it up. I'm sorry about that. $2,118.14. Good. So now let's go ahead and subtract that out. It's going to be $350. We're going to have a remainder of $350. going to be $1,482.69. Good. So let's transfer that amount over to our inventory on hand. And the amount is going to be 4.2436269. Good. Okay. Good. 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 Okay, then we're going to eliminate that right there. Okay. So then what has happened on June 20th? Um, on June 20th, we purchased 600 units at 
four dollars and five cents on an account with a freight cost of twenty dollars. Okay, so purchase six hundred units at four oh five with freight of twenty. So we did, what was it, 600 at 405 with freight of 20. Okay, and this was on May 20th, I mean June 20th. Okay, so then what is my total purchase price going to be? Um, $2,430. All right, plus my $20 freight. Uh, brings us to twenty four fifty. Twenty four fifty. All right, and let's go ahead and calculate our brand new total call uh quantity. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Twenty four fifty. Twenty four fifty. All right. And then we're gonna add in the For a total of $3,932.69. Okay, so carry those over and then divide it by that, yes. Comes to 4.1396736. All right, so we dropped, we dropped our average cost down by 10 cents, roughly. All right. Okay, so then we can go ahead and wipe that out and move along down in our inventory worksheet. So what's the next batch or what's the next scenario say on the 22nd of June? 22nd of June, we sold 250 units, uh, $10.50 each for cash, no sales tax. Okay, so we sold 250 on June 22nd. So 250 at 413. Okay, for $1,034.92. $1,034.92. Good. So let's subtract that 250. So what is my new quantity now? 700. 700. Subtract my cost of goods sold to bring me a new value of? $2,827.77. Say that again. 2000 $2,897.77. Good. So then let's transfer that amount over and calculate our new average cost per item. This is... 4.139674. Good. All right. We're almost done, guys. So what happened on the 25th of June? Um, we purchased 350 units at $4.35 each on an account with a freight cost of $50. So here we purchased three fifty at three fifty at four dollars and thirty five cents with a freight of fifty dollars on June twenty fifth. So what's my total purchase price here? Uh. Uh, $1,522.50. Good. Plus my $50 freight. Uh, 
$1,572.50. Good. Now, what do I do now? So now we need to add our inventory together. Correct. Which gives us 1050 in units. Good. And I have to add our dollars together. Mm -hmm. Which gives us $4,470.50. $4,470.27. Good. So then, now let's calculate our new average cost per item, and what do we get here? All right, so divided by 1050 gives us a unit price of $4.2547. Four well, Good. All right, so I forgot to clear these all up. Good. And wipe those all out because we don't have those anymore. All right. And then lastly, what has happened on June 27th? June 27th, you sold 550 units, $10.50 each for cash, no sales tax. Good. So June 27th. 550 items at my 425 number. Mm -hmm. okay. I get $2,341.57. Good. All right. Let's subtract that out. Okay, and what do we get left remaining? 500 units. Okay. For $2,128.70. Good. And then let's transfer the amounts over. get 4.2574. Good. All right, and I'm going to hide this amount here and block it off. So then what is the last thing that says on this scenario as of June 30th? 500 units on hand. And do we have the 500? We do. Yes, we do. And it cost us a total of 21 28 and 70 cents. So, good job, everybody. This is the easiest. I told you it's the easiest one. Again, it's just a matter of rinse and repeating. Understand what to do when the concepts are there. So then chapter 8 tomorrow, right? We're going to review all three concepts. Okay? All three concepts. All right. All right. So if you guys don't have any other questions, that's all I have.